go. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Hit Confirm. I am part of this combo hosted next to uh, my guy, Coach, here. Yo, what up, everybody? Uh, Coach here. Um, coming here, bringing you a new episode. Uh, we got a fiery guest sitting in the wings. Uh, <laughs> somebody uh, I've been acquainted with for quite a while. Uh, someone who I respect a lot, and so I'm glad I got him on the show. But uh, Mr. Painbot, uh, could you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I'm Painbot. I'm. I'm either the, the guy that you've probably seen complaining for a long time, or. <laughs> <laughs> or the guy that you now know is really good at a different game. <laughs> so, one or the other. <laughs> I feel like every community probably has that. Yeah, probably. I, I have a nice little history. Because <laughs> when Will first met me, mm-hmm. he was just like, you're that guy that complains about Alex all the time. <laughs> 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 and then I beat his ass in Street Fighter 4. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? He's like, you're, he's like why are you good at this? <laughs> I mean, oh, man. You, you, you're a very passionate individual, and those who have uh, been in the Georgia scene and will know that very well. Uh, you know, what's, it's what's interesting. So, like, I every now and then I used to see you play Street Fighter 4 when I played Marvel. But then when Exar came out, I think you got into Exar, like, a little bit later. Mm-hmm. And you picked up Eno. I was like, cool. He's, like, picking up, you know, I, I can't wait to help him out and everything. And then you dropped her. And I was like... What happened? <laughs> so then, but that was cool. I was like, all right, that's cool. You know, it's guilty gear. Everybody like doesn't stick with their first character because I definitely didn't stick with my first character, Testament. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I uh, so I saw you playing Jam. I was like, oh, cool, he's playing Jam now. And then like I was like, I don't know how I feel about that because I think all Jam players are nutty. But I've seen him play Street Fighter Four, so maybe he can make it work. So then, maybe like I don't know, a month or two later, I saw you play Hey Human. And then that's when I was like, all right, I'm a fan now. <laughs> don't don't, don't every, know about this guy. <laughs> oh, oh, I love every, every Hey Hume player. And, I, like, I feel like every Hey Hume player, whether you're good or bad, they just made a decision for that character. That character, just, <laughs> they made a good decision. You say you need, like, it's a cool. spiritual con- connection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much. And, it's like, fun. look, he has footies with that character, man. Like, <laughs> that, that is really, I mean, okay, so here's here's how that happened. So, first I picked Eno, and that was in Sign. And I was like, this character's kind of cool. But Sign was fucked up. So, like, <laughs> I stopped playing. I was like, I don't... I, I just quit playing Sign. And then Street Fighter Five came out. And then, you know, I just shifted my focus to Five. And then, I was trash to me. So, like, I was like, well, let's go back to playing Guilty Gear a little. That was, like, almost a year and a half later. And I played Jam. I was like, I love this character. And then Jay, I fucking found out what it takes to be do optimal combos on every character in the game. I found out I was not a pass, even though I liked. So I, I I still pick Jay with my friends because those are the those are the one characters that like missed enough to like know the PK combos. Yeah. But like on anyone else, I don't because the the character just doesn't function if you don't know PK combos, <laughs> honestly. Um but then I was like, you know who, you know, I was like, you know who's fun and looks dope and looks like the combos work on everybody? Hey, Hume. So I picked Hey, Hume. And I was like, this character is fucking amazing. <laughs> I picked Hey, Hume with the intention of not having to learn too many combos and still doing a lot of damage and it worked out. And then I learned all the ball key. I was like, this character is amazing. This character is so simple. I can just like use my instincts on people and it'll work out. That's it. And then I'll learn the matchups later. Well, you know, for the most part, I didn't get the matchups later part because <laughs> I really ended up, um, not that I didn't end up liking Guilty Gear Exard, mm-hmm. I just didn't like the meta. <laughs> so, I ended up just leaving. That was it. It's not like I hate the game. I love the game. Yeah. I just don't like the uh, tournament meta. That's really it. I mean, I, I will play anyone who asks me for Guilty Gear because I actually, man, I just can't. I mean, I've already talked the fucking... <laughs> I have had many conversations with the uh, coach. Oh man! Oh <laughs> about, man! Yeah. <laughs> about this reward, <laughs> and uh, it's in it, that game is very uh, weird. Risk reward in that game is very disproportionate. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> yeah, we definitely uh, butted heads on different opinions on that, but uh, I feel I feel like it was always kind of fruitful in the end of the day. Yeah, I don't I don't hate I don't hate players that play the game. I appreciate that, man. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone. I'm sure everybody in all those games you hated, all those Marvel players. You know, like I don't hate them. 
<laughs> yeah, I've never hated anyone <laughs> part of the communities that the games I don't like. I, I mean, I get along with every community because I'm so fucking the way I am. Right. But I mean, I I've just taken that. It, I just won't. So I won't be a part of them because. So let's talk about that. For the best. <laughs> because that's something that's always bothered me. Why do we so many people attribute like gameplay to their personality? I don't. Like, I'm like, I'm like crazy. Like I, I'm really loud. Like I'm, I'm very emotional when I talk about anything. Mm-hmm. But when I play, I try to keep that completely the opposite. I try to not do anything too out of my nature. I try to make sure everything's very calm and calculated. I don't make decisions the inviting games based on emotion ever. Right. I'll, I'll do it on instinct because I just like I bring my opponent and I believe that it's gonna work. But I've never made decisions based on I feel that if I do jump three times, jump and then do my Bonnie Gaishi, it's going to work. You know, I've never done something like that. I'm always like, okay, I'll do this two times. See if they'll do it. Okay, they didn't do it that time. So I'll do this two more times. Okay, they bid it. Okay, so next time, this will not happen. No, I'm that kind of guy. Yeah. So it, my personality isn't exactly like the. I, I think uh, a part of your personality does come out in your play, actually, from what I've observed. No, uh, you think so? I mean, yeah. you're, you're the commentator. <laughs> that wants to be, so well, go ahead. Don't explain it, man. Well, no, I mean, the emotional, passionate part, I, I would agree with you, but there's a part of you who's uh, very, um, what you see is what you get, and you're very straightforward. And I think that comes a lot in your game. Because you don't really play out of, like, the seat. You play in a place like, look, these are, these are the tools that you got to get around. Can you get around them? You, I don't ever, like I don't see you playing something like Amelia where it's like, you know, they got to play around a pin. And how do I get how do I get them to play around a pin? You want a straightforward tool to do the thing that that, that it does, and you want the opponent to know that, and they got to show you that they can get around it. So I think that straightforward, uh, in your face kind of attitude is kind of reflected in your gameplay. Yeah, most of my characters have that kind of like motif. Like when I play Jam. <laughs> I literally, my entire game plan was five, uh, five S, hot potion show, and it literally I would I would run five S, hot potion show, and then I would um, just see what they would do, and then if they couldn't handle it, then I would just run that shit, and then the whole strategy would built around what they did versus you know, five S and the hot potion show, and then I just use how strong I guess it's not five S I guess y'all you, you use far slash I guess it's uh, FS. I would use uh, FS to leverage the entire map because I could just option select uh, YRC FS into a combo or option select, you know, it'd be a regular Roman hit, but I would Roman cancel it. So I just like straightforward tools like that. And then Coon was the same way. Coon to me was like, I'm going to use fucking, uh, what the, what, I can't remember the name of the English move, but he's like, I saw Toshi, he's like, the axe kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. I you just ran that shit. shit like crazy. I'm just like, can you stop me? No? Okay, we're going to run this, and I'm going to fucking see how you play around this one tool. And if you can't, like, get around it, then I'm just going to run this shit to the ground. But if you can't get around it, then I'll just work around your work around. And make right. as much as I can. And it worked. I mean, when I play Kehune, it's not like I'm bad. I, when I lose, when I, honestly, when I lose in Guilty Gear, it really is a lack of um, character knowledge out of, like, it's, it's really because I'm stubborn and I don't want to learn how to fight these top tiers that they've been pull my fucking hair out, right? So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm losing because I don't deserve it. But it's like I lose because I'm, I don't want to play it versus these fucking characters. <laughs> like, I haven't even bothered to, to actually learn how to lab most of this stuff because I get so hung up on the, um, on the details. Because I just don't like seeing uh, people put in way less effort mm-hmm. and they get five times the reward. <laughs> Because of like, like that. because of the mechanics, you know, like it, you know, it's almost like, uh, another way would be, uh, I guess in uh, not even Street Fighter Five, but Street Fighter Four. Uh, an, uh, another character that's like that is uh, you would look at like uh, Hakan, and Hakan would have to work so fucking hard after a throw, and he would keep oiling up to just be dangerous. But then if Geef just lands a command throw, he's just always fucking dead. always there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like you know. I just that shit upsets me so much, but th- that's just a character versus character. Guilty Gear Xar, that was a mechanic. Yeah. Difference, differ- differential between characters that pissed me off. Yeah. I can only see like Johnny and Kai and like fucking Chip use YRC, and like the options are so lopsided in their favor, whether it hits or miss, or it doesn't work. 
but there's like no consequence, immediate consequence. Like I know coach already talked about it, like the consequences that you like meter, but you know, other characters do it too and they don't get shit and they like meter. <laughs> so that's how, that's, that's how I always looked at it as a player. I'm like, you know, you're right. You are right. But my character does that d- doesn't get those. And I also miss out on them. So it's just that plus more for, for the work, the, le- the lesser characters. Built. But you know, I'm not like a pro get the gear player. That's just how I perceived it as a, as like a amateur trying to get better, at coming to eventually to come to terms. That I just don't like <laughs> risk reward. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like when you hit, like I feel like this is true in any game. When you hit intermediate, or as you're going from amateur intermediate, obviously, like what you think is good and bad, or how the game functions, it's gonna change. Like you're basically like in this infantile state where you're rapidly changing, your views are changing, and then you get to a point where you know. If I want to get past this wall, here's the hard stuff. Now, the hard stuff is it might be like, like you said, learning the top tier characters, um, how to fight them, or it might be like there's this mechanic, like say CBS two role canceling. You guys like, I gotta do this. How much yeah. does how does this mean to me? And at the, at some point, it's like I gotta really be invested in this, whether emotionally or whatever, to just start doing the hard stuff because that's what you're gonna have to do to play the real game, quote unquote. Yeah, you're you're one hundred percent correct. Because what I, what I ended up happening, what ended up, the breaking point was when I was looking at answers versus Kai, uh, Johnny, and Chip, and all them. And you know, I don't like reach out too much for other people, but the conclusions I drew were just like, I'm just doing this to survive, <laughs> not to really come ahead. I'm more like I enjoy when I make a decision. It, there's immediate like I, I'm ahead now because I made the right choice. I don't like uh, I don't want to like you already said it before. Like it's more <laughs> like meter management in the long run. But to me, I don't give a fuck about that. I like it. But I prefer Sam Lar Showdown. I know you're gonna run up throw. I see you do it twice. I dodge once. You're dead. I knew you were gonna do it. I don't have to fucking fight you for another five fifty seconds to prove I was right. <laughs> like, I get That's you. I get I feel you. About guilty gear. I, and, and you're not wrong. You're not wrong. As I feel like, um, it's like it's like you take a game like Risk. It, it how long how long is a game of Risk last? It lasts a long time, right? Because you can't just beat your opponent down. You gotta slide. Yeah. You gotta slide their resources away. And then that's just it's just a different flavor of where do you want to put your strategy? Where do you want to put your effort? And in a lot of games, if you look at it on a scale, yeah, Samurai Showdown is definitely on the end. It's like you do action A. And my here's my action B as a counter. You you know there's no there's no give and take. There's no ambiguity. And at the other end you have a game. You say Guilty Gear. Uh, and there's others, but it's like yeah, it's like, well you want to use this good thing now, but then when you hit me you have nothing. Or if I hit you you have nothing. And then you play this long range games. And I definitely see the uh, the appeal of one or the other depending on like your personality, what you like, what you enjoy. Because uh, one thing I think a lot of people get, want out of a game in general whether it be a fighting game despite their levels they they want some degree of instant gratification and that's mm-hmm. not necessarily a bad thing it's just like you know when you, when you turn on a devil may cry you hit the buttons the monsters go up in the air and like you can optimize that but you get something right out of the box and so like yeah i can definitely see like something like sam shows like no this this goofy dude is slinging 5c i'm gonna knock his weapon out of his hand <laughs> and it's like you, you know you, you don't have to play games with it right he yeah, does it. Yeah. He loses his weapon. But uh, like Guilty Gear, like you said, you gotta like, uh, you know, this Johnny sitting around. He's he's got level three. He's in my face. He burnt fifty meter, and then he burnt his uh, misfinder. But it feels like hell because you're sitting through it. But the Johnny player, once he's actually done with it, and he realized that he wasted it, it feels terrible. But he doesn't feel terrible right away. It's like it's one of those things, and I and I definitely get your point, and I know we kind of go back and forth, but like I definitely understood what you're coming from with that. The um, I I feel like I I'm trying not to sound like a fucking caveman where I just need my <laughs> fucking my uh, I need it right now. I need to know you know you fucked up. Like yeah, I understand I that yeah, yeah, that it's like not that's not everyone's cup. Because obviously Darius that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to frame it in a bad way, but what's up, Casey? I think it's uh, Exard is an interesting case because, and I've pretty a good example is Johnny, right? Where I've always said that character should have been in the game in the first place, and if they put <laughs> it in the game, it's screwed up. Because the thing with Exard is 
is you know based off you know kind of sort of the exact uh, the XX series, but mm -hmm. they wanted to make it easier. Now a person who's played it a little bit with the XX series, especially a lot of plus R, that game was hard. But once you get past the hard stuff, it becomes really cheap. So now when you make all that cheap stuff really easy, then you're like okay, now this is you get straight to the point and you. It, it, you don't have to go through the execution learning curve no more. So now you get to the point where it's just like, who's who strict, just flat out who's better, who's like weaker. Like, you know, you, you still have some like sort of, I guess, weak characters in Gifted Gear that uh can pass by. But um, when you have characters like Johnny that just, you know, it doesn't matter how like much meter or, you know, coins they have they can still just win at any point in the match because the game is much more like you know at that point then it's it's just very hard to like very deal with or cope with with in terms of like accepting i would say um, no you're, you're how you how you worded that is kind of how like how i feel because you know honestly i well i keep saying oh, i'm just like oh, i gotta stop saying it. <laughs> good. i hate it it's like one of my most common starter to my sentences. I gotta, I gotta work on That's because that. you're, um, you're an honest guy. Yeah, I know. I gotta <laughs> stop. <laughs> but, uh, the guilt, like, so the, uh, Exard, I, I, this is gonna sound petty as fuck, but when I played, uh, Exard, I always felt that the reason why it really turned me off is that when I played people, not that they were, like, horrible, but I, I was just, like, why is everyone playing these top characters so much of a threat when I can tell their decision making isn't that great, but the weight of countering it is so high on me? Because if I can't, if I if I didn't study them up and down, up and around, then my player to player interactions don't mean to. Mm -hmm. And it's really frustrating because I when I play Street Fighter Four. Or uh, if I play Samurai Showdown, the player-to-player -player interactions dictate most of the match. And then the matchup is also important, but it's like secondary almost. Because the tools you're given are player-to-player. -player. Yeah. I feel like fucking Exard and like... I don't know if you have to get... I never played XX, but when I play Exard, the wall of bullshit presented to, play, to, to stop me from even interacting as a player-to-player -player is so big. That I can never even break that down without spending a very long time playing Guilty Gear. It like the time involved is very very high to even begin to even enjoy playing the game because I, I'm not I'm not I'm not having a good time playing that game when I'm like when I'm knocked on the ground and the guy he may not even be that good of a player really but he, 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 he practiced his Oki and his C <laughs> mix and I'm dead because <laughs> I did not I had not spent four months labbing fucking, I don't know, fucking, I don't, I don't know, fucking shit left, right mix-ups or some shit. This guy is just going to demolish me. And I, I know that's common in most, I know that, I know in most fighting games there is always a knowledge barrier, but Guilty Gear's knowledge barrier seems to supersede so much. And then once you get to a certain point, then the player-to-player -player really started to shine on the, on the, on the decision-making, on yeah. how to spend their, but... There was such a fucking wall. I just could never get around. But I was like, I'm. I don't even want to deal with this because I don't want to spend six months labbing my just block into fucking <laughs> my my just block into my FD into like a FD option select just to stay alive. Yeah. Just to stay alive. Not yeah. even to like pressure them. Just to get out of their shit. Just to you stop know, them just... from doing something they were gonna do anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were gonna do it anyway, and they were, and then even when they do it, and I know they're gonna do it, nothing happens to them. <laughs> they just, you know, they're like, damn. Well, I guess I gotta get more meters somehow. So let me just fucking put some filler in the gameplay. Dash the left, right. Dash left, right. Da -da -da -da. Okay, got a meter back. Time to do my shit again. Did it work this time? Good. I win. <laughs> like, I just, I just couldn't get around it, and I just, I, I know it doesn't exist at the highest level. Yeah. Obviously, people stop each other because they know everything about each other. Yeah, but that's always going to be at the highest level. Yeah, but at intermediate, but to get to that point, mm -hmm. the intermediate level is super unfun. It's not fun at all. Uh -huh. It's not unless you're playing someone else's intermediate. Yeah, and, I think I think there's a actual like because what you kind of pointed out kind of showed me the problem I had when I wanted to level up in the game. There's no 
huge pool, huge huge pool of people to play like that kind of mitigates a lot of that so it's like it's like another game that's kind of similar to what you're talking about like Tekken right everyone has 100 moves yeah yeah, you got, exactly you, yeah, yeah. Tekken. <laughs> but, at, but at least you can go on Tekken and play a bunch of people and it's easier to alleviate, alleviate. Instead yeah, of, like, yeah. with Guilty Gear, where it's, like, you got to travel if you want to play somebody of quality, and then online is questionable at best. And it's, like, you have to do, supplement that with, like, a ton of labs, a ton of theory fighting before you really get to where you want. And then once you break through, it's fine, like you said. But it's, like, with Tekken, at least, it's, like, it's, characters have 100 moves, but at least I can log online and, you know, play 100, uh, you 100 know. 100 <laughs> oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, at least I know what this character's going to do to me to some degree, and I can mitigate a good chunk of it just by playing. But, like, Guilty Gear, like, you, you not only do you have that struggle, but you can't just roll in there and it's like, okay, give me give me your scrubs and let me get rid of the, let me, you know, start at the bottom level and stuff like that. Um. So I I held this in for the longest time. I've slowly been telling people this ever since, I guess, Exar hasn't been, like, really in the spot like, like it used to be. But before Exar came out, I question, I guess, the game because uh, how we were basically been saying like how uh, the rinse and repeat factor of like Oki and I, I held it in because I wanted myself. I didn't want to like go off like on a tangent as soon as the game come out and be like and not know too much about the game. But I did have a feeling earlier on that on what it would turn to be and it ended up turning that way. Where is this YRC rinse repeat for me? And uh, so a good example is like Eno. Um, when I was learning her in Plus R, of course I got attached to the character because I was like, cool, she she had cool combos and everything. I didn't actually get attached to her uh, Oki. And, Cause I knew like in Guilty Gear at the time, at the highest level, um, Oki, that's pretty much every character can pretty much do it their Oki in different ways. But when Exar came out and YRC ended up being a thing, I was like, oh, well, now everybody can pretty much do the, you know, that's what I call it, which is <laughs> throw, throw, throw something out on a, uh, do something on YRC on Oki. And uh, I wasn't too mad about it at first because I, I was like, well, I have this tool too and I can abuse it. I think what really tipped me over is the fact that um how you just said on interaction, how like even when I was winning and beating some people sometimes, how I wasn't even really interacting with them anymore. It just was like, and they weren't even learning. At that point, they're not really learning the game <laughs> too much, even if like they're, you know, they were they're trying to learn. It's just me running them over. And uh, it's hard for people to uh, kind of evaluate those type of matches. Whereas, it, whereas it, um, when I was playing plus R, and I know a lot of people like going to throw me down for this, uh, I felt because some of the execution barrier, uh, it kind of helped bring back, it kept that game grounded in terms of um, interaction. So like, if, if of course, if you did have the execution if you, barrier, if you got through that, you, you know, that interaction almost became like a rinse and repeat thing, but it didn't happen as often as Exar. So you still like every now and then more, more so matches would be like, I'm doing this with, to the opponent. He's going to like, you know, have his answers to it. Um, but yeah, that was my biggest gripe with Exar and I held that in for the longest. And when <laughs> Exar kind of died, I was like, all right, I'm fleshing this out. I, I, I don't, like you said, I don't hate the game. I'm happy that it exists and I've met the players I've met through it. Uh, it's just that I, it, it has some problems. It, has, it does have some deep, deep problems. I think but, I think uh, when you get to the point where you can like, hey, this game has problems. You you know it well enough. You experienced it well enough. That I think that's a yeah. cool thing in itself. And you, you brought up something I thought was interesting in it because it kind of plays off what Painbot was saying, where he's like, yeah, this guy starts doing this thing to me. I'm not interacting. But what about from the other side, right? When you're winning. Do you, how do you know you're good when you don't have like an actual basis or you don't you don't have enough experience? You like you know my milli is sick, I, I'm the greatest, <laughs> and then you play somebody who actually knows the ins and outs of like her spacing and tools, and you feel like an idiot. Like that that's the kind of the other side of it too. You can get like a really skewed uh, <laughs> view of how good you actually are based yeah. on your win weight. Yeah, I hate it. I hated that because when I play cool. I either stomp people or I struggle. And it's because of that. I can't tell how good I am because it's either they don't know about it or they do. And I don't know what to do about it because I, I, it's hard to gauge my weakness when it's constantly so fucking wishy-washy on 
what, what's it called? Like fucking um, on my um, it's so wishy washy on my. I don't know. I'm, I'm the, the the results I'm getting are not clear cut as to what I need to work on. <laughs> it's hard to tell when I'm being somebody really good, or and then they just didn't know the fucking matchup or something. <laughs> And then, like, the next day, I'll lose to, like, somebody who's just average because they actually bothered to lab it. And it's like, am I good? Am I bad? Did I have a good day? I can't fucking tell. Them this. I know in Samurai Showdown, I'm good because no one can fucking touch me because it's all footsies and, like, fucking anti-airing. So there's a very easy and noticeable um, way to, like, gauge your skill level in Samurai Showdown because it really just comes down to basic. Yeah, but yeah. Guilty Gear is super, like, complicated and not it's not complicated it's it's complicated it's only complication is it's assessing yourself <laughs> no no you're right because that's basically for me with you know in a nutshell like i'll either be ro- rolling through you or you'll just be rolling through me because like i just didn't know what was really going on because i didn't have time to know what was going on <laughs> man maybe, maybe it's like a like because the way i see it is like yeah i wouldn't use the word complicated either. it's like barriers in front of uh, you and what's gonna eventually happen. Like with Sam's show, you know, you walk in the door, the other guy's there, and you just get in your fist fight, right? With Guilty yeah. Gear, you know, you, you're playing a game of politics, trying to decide what, where, when and where the matchup's gonna be, what the pot's gonna be, and then, you know, you you hire out goons to go break the other guy's legs, and then, you know, eventually, <laughs> through all that mess, yeah, you find yourself in the match, you know, <laughs> and then it's something else entirely. So it's like, yeah, you gotta kind of go through these barriers before you get to it and some people that's 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 the fun but and then like you said the other ways like i'm gonna walk in there if you press this button i'm with punishing you if you jump and i didn't do anything well i'm knocking you out of the air you know if i see if i know you're gonna do the thing you get the immediate consequence it's same for me right because like if i'm pressing something and i don't know the range and spacing of it and you hit me well, i mean that's i can't say anything right i can just say yeah yeah it's like that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> how i feel i like I like that I can walk away with every match at bare minimum knowing what to work on, no matter what. And obviously you can do that with any fighting game, but it's much more clear-cut to see your weaknesses as a player, specifically. Not your matchup knowledge weaknesses, but you can see your matchup knowledge weaknesses, obviously. But you can see your tendencies as a player and work on them. And honestly, playing Terrence in Sam Show has really sharpened me. <laughs> like, a lot. <laughs> And it's very helpful that I can play him in Samurai Showdown. He can roll me over in Street Fighter, for sure, because I don't, like, lab. Yeah. But in Sam Show, I can tell I'm becoming a much better player. And even Street Fighter, I'm becoming a much better player because I'm beating people that I have, like, I have no business. <laughs> I don't even play the game, right? But, like, the fundamentals are showing that, like, my decision-making on a case-by-case basis get better. But just playing Sam Show really helped that. Because it's very clear cut. It's just very clear cut. Especially when you play someone like Terrence or Bates, right? Yeah. So you, they just make it obvious. Like when Bates is two sees me, and I'm just like, I must have just been very obvious. I must have walked <laughs> forward. Through. I must have done this three or four times. And he just finally, you know, I'm going to watch the replay. And like, sure enough, yes, I've done this this many times. It was just, <laughs> he just knew as a player that this is what I'm going to do. Terrence is like, I watch Terrence inch back and forth. I'm like, okay, how's he sizing me up? This is how he does it. This is what he's looking. For. So I'm, as a player, I can't show. I can't have a tell. I'm I'm masking my tells much better as I play. You know, both of them. But you know, I, like, but ga- but games like, <laughs> like games like Guilty Gear attacking. I can't get that. I can't get that point without fucking playing for two or three years. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how they build those long term investments. You, you never feel like I've never felt like so much of a fraud than when I play Tekken because <laughs> that game don't give a fuck about anything that you know about fighting up front. And then because you have this huge wall of knowledge that you have to climb, that if you don't, everyone is threatening. Even what were the Johnny Donuts? Even Johnny <laughs> Donuts is threatening. <laughs> he always got that that obscure launcher on deck. <laughs> Yeah, he used that wall rising three plus four that no one uses, but it crushes mids or some shit, and you just <laughs> never seen it. But Johnny Donuts does it online all the time, and it works because people are stupid, and I'm also stupid. So, I hate it. <laughs> so, so it is what it is. I hate it, man. I fucking Tekken pisses me off so much, dude. I don't even play Tekken anymore because I just can't stand 
seeing people that have no fucking like ability to like stop themselves from pressing buttons just run in this shit because they know the guy has absolutely no idea how to stop it. And then I'll watch better players who just have that amount of knowledge and they'll just checkmate them at everything because they they've been they've done seen everything. So this guy can't random out the other guy with stupid flow chart. But I'm not willing to put that for them for that because I'm not having fun. <laughs> I am not having fun playing that way because it's homework at that point. It's not even fun homework. Like fun homework to me, like like Street Fighter Four had fun homework. I was like, okay, let me see my exact spacing on this where with punish is optimal and how I can convert that to more damage. And then Tekken is like, uh, if you don't do this, I'm gonna come to your house and shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my teacher telling me he's gonna shoot me in my head if I don't fucking do the homework. That's Tekken in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, you trying to you trying to do your baking soda volcanoes? You ain't trying to do a uh, hundred page essays? To... <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. I mean, nothing against Tekken guys. I, I know Tekken's his legacy game everyone loves, but the 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 risk reward in that game is so fucked up. Even the high levels at risk reward, up. and I've come to ter- I think I think I've come to terms with my, what I like in fighting games, and I think I value risk reward over everything. And I think a lot of fighting games these days are really fucking at risk reward <laughs> for the sake of flashiness. <laughs> yeah. And I am not down with that at all because I am not cool with get a person losing ninety five percent of the match and then having meter and then they win. Like I'm just I'm not. Cool. It's not even like man. Sometimes they just fucking land a hit, <laughs> convert, devastate, and it's cool and hype and everything for the commentators and the people watching the YouTube the Twitter clip. But to me, it's not fun to uh, be winning. And then have the whole match under control, and then they're rewarded because they lost. And then now you have to fight the secondary mechanic that they gain from getting their ass kicked. <laughs> I'm not down with that at all. That and you know, Sam, I, I can't even say Samurai Showdown is clean with that because they have whip it, weapon flip technique, but they balance that with instant death. That if you fuck it up, you lose immediately. It's not like you get weapon flip and then now, if you you can just keep doing it until it hits, like you die, like. It's your comeback mechanic, but if you go for it, you're dead. It, it, like in Street Fighter Four, like Rose is the best. Rose and Elena's, you know why? Because they didn't gotta think about it. They just fucking do it. <laughs> and then it, it, no matter what, it's a win. But in uh, but everyone else is ultra in that game. If you just threw it out in neutral, you lose. But you have to like land it or earn it in some sort of way to make it worth your while. I hate like passive like abilities. I hate it. They made it from like you have to hit. So like, all right, guys, you're still losing. So we're gonna make you passively better, and then you're bound to get something, right? To me, that's like the way fucking fighting it going days. But luckily, I think Grand Blue is kind of like a better direction of what I like to see. Even though I don't like the game's character roster at all, but the mechanics are more in tune with what I like as a player. Because now, if you're winning, you get bar. The loser gets bar too, but. It doesn't matter because the winner also gets bar, and if he just does what he's supposed to do, you will never get the chance to land your shit. Yeah. So, I'm cool with that. That's totally. <laughs> that's totally what I want. I don't. Want, I think I wouldn't like Grand Blue if I was beating Grand and it's a bad <laughs> matchup. I'm already beating Grand, and then he fucking wakes up with medium and then cancels into something and he's gross and then he's gross for thirty <laughs> seconds and then he was already gross but now he's extra gross and my character's trash and then I'm extra. And so he beats my ass, and then now I it's my turn to come back. But guess what? It's not going to happen because I took too much. He's stronger than I was when I was winning, so he actually kills me. <laughs> like I mean, that's the crazy part. Like that that's where the that's where the uh, that's where they lose me because the uh, losers in the match end up stronger than the winners, and then where the winner cannot finish, the loser will because they were stronger mm-hmm. in that in that turn of event. So it is what it is. Like I think I think uh, and uh, I think the most common thing I see is that five specific not specifically Big Marvel has this problem too, but five the guy will be with nothing, no no resources, maybe like a bar, and then he'll have, he'll have his comeback. He'll do some shit, land it, and in the process of landing his shit, he'll build a super. And the guy that was winning had to burn the super in order to get him almost close to death. But the guy with the V trigger and the super together had enough to one shot the guy. Like, 
I understand that all too well because <laughs> before Grand Blue was coming out, and I actually wasn't playing uh, Street Fighter Five to get like into Grand Blue. I was legit like excited to play Street Fighter Five because Ed was like a character. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll play him. And I ran into a G once, and every <laughs> round I kid, I, I should have saved the replays of this match. Every round I would dominate, and he will. I'll have him in a corner in the right side of the screen, and then he'll just run it back and activate V trigger, run it back, take him to the other corner. It happened for all like both both the sets. He sent me a message. Hey, cool. I play Ed too. He's pretty fun, but G is pretty cheap. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, like, I get it. I freaking get it. That is ridiculous. I'm winning. I should get rewarded for winning. Like, why do I have to still deal with you? <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah. Y'all ain't y'all ain't a fan of the uh, Shonen Power Up. I'm no. at my, I'm at my no, limit. No, only <laughs> I, have deal, I have to deal with that in Marvel Three. I was yeah. gonna say Marvel Three is the other game, but I feel like that too. It's so bad. It's only bad because it's like I said. It's it's terrible for. It's it's not conducive to good feedback because what's happening is this is a big problem with all games with time combat mechanics like this. Luckily, Sam Show doesn't have this problem because um, we don't have secondary meter and our meter gets us killed. But the um, problem is is that when you have a revenge mechanic and it also builds the primary meter and the other guy doesn't have access to the revenge mechanic or the, the usefulness, the 100% of it, they'll try to kill you and I know a lot of people are like, well, he should have used super. Well, the, the problem is that even if he didn't use super, he was still not going to be able to finish you off anyway because a lot of these games deny you the mix-up anyway. <laughs> so if he didn't finish you, you still had your revenge bar anyway. So you were going to re- use it anyway. So if you pop the revenge bar, you will not only turn that revenge bar into 80%, but you will also turn it into 100% bar in the process. And then in that process, you will have the bar to kill it. So it's it's really frustrating to see uh, those two things work in tandem. Really, really annoying. It's super fucking frustrating. Yeah, Actually, I hate on watching. On top of it, like you said earlier, they're playing like a sh- already strong character. Yeah, and now they're stronger. <laughs> they were already strong. And if your character is trash, you just die. You extra. <laughs> and ain't nothing you can do about it. I mean, you could be a better player, but if the guy's also a good player, let's just say you're both good players. Then decisively, if his character is gross as a revenge with a revenge mechanic, and your character isn't, and you're both by equally skilled, odds are they're in his favor just because you don't have the opportunities he he has to uh, make things work in your favor. So even if you do come out on top in a match, there's always that chance he'll come back anyway. And as opposed to if he comes against you and your your revenge mechanic is not an instant, I throw the shit and now you're a fifty fifty, then. You are not gonna just win. Like I like the I, so like I have Sagat right, and I like Sagat. I love Sagat. He's one of my, he's my favorite Street Fighter kid, and I've, I've been playing Sagat for a long time. Now Sagat technically on the ground in Street Fighter Five is not that bad. He has good footy tools. His fireball works okay. His B, Sam Bean King is good. His Stan Lighthouse is fucking good. Stan Fox Fierce is good. Stan Fierce is good. So it's like what's the weakness here? Well, he can't get people off of him when he's pressured. And when he needs to put the pressure on the other people with his knee trigger, nothing really happens that's dangerous. So that means if I fall behind and I got to make a comeback, it's incredibly difficult to get worth. But if I'm playing versus G or Urian or anyone that's like top tier with a good comeback revenge mechanic, then if I get ahead, there's a whole second level of fighting I'm about to do just to get to the fucking end of the round. This guy is totally not concerned with my revenge mechanic. Right? But... I am totally wondering how the fuck I'm going to stop him in a second. <laughs> like, like, when I pop me trigger with like, suck out, they're not like, oh, God, what's about to happen? It's more like, I guess I'll just block for 30 more seconds. Because <laughs> there's nothing that's going to happen to it. So it's just, that's a, such a detriment. It's not fun. It's not fun for uh, players, by the way. This is why people are very, uh, they're very, uh, they're very uh, vocal about um, their character's disparity at times in these newer games. Because it's like, they're not having a good time because they, they just see this other character that does everything this does and then more that's the, even when you beat them. So they're not having a good time. Why would they have a good time if they're working hard and then the other character is just enabled <laughs> from the hard work anyway? So that's that's my whole rage on rage mechanics. <laughs> I, th- I think that's, yeah, that's pretty common, like, because that's, that's, that's to me, like, outside of Grand Blue and I guess Samurai Showdown, 
that's kind of the divide that's been kind of drawn between the quote unquote old school games and new school games. Though, like, obviously, like some of the indies are probably the exceptions, but generally with the mainstream stuff, that's where we've seen it go. And you, like you said, it's probably for flashiness and for a presentation and to get the casual guy involved. You know, everyone wants to feel a little strong. So let me ask you a question, Um If you could change, because a, a lot of newer games are promoted to helping, you know, the casuals getting, you know, obviously better into the and getting into the games in the first place. So what would be a way if you can like substitute the whole comeback mechanic thing? What would you do for the substitute that? Well, teaching people correctly would that that would probably get people to learn how to fight. First. <laughs> So like a, uh, a better tutorial mode. The better tutorial, like Tekken don't even have a goddamn tutorial. <laughs> Yo, get that is in. the hardest game, and there's no tutorial. <laughs> it's crazy. Fucking even Street Fighter got a shitty tutorial. But the um, I think better learning tools is more important than handing someone in the long run. because more people quit before they even learn the. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's more important for something like that to exist. Uh, another way to keep casual players would probably be to have better netcode and better options online. Uh, those are more important than any. That's why games like Street Fighter V, even if people are fucking vocally trashed about it, they people still play it. They'll still play it because there's more of this a higher player base, and there's at least if rollback does work when it does on that game, it's still a playable game, right? So it's more reason that people to stick. Around. But like games like Sam Show. I can't convince people to play. People to play. I can't. Not in good for. Not good favor. I don't even tell people to buy the game. <laughs> it's like I can't tell. Unless they live in Georgia, I'll tell them, "Hey, if you buy the game, we'll, we'll got we got you." Because I can guarantee that we're going to play each other, right? Yeah. But if they don't live here, I'm not going to tell them to buy that game. It's only because even if they like it, I, I who knows if they're going to have a good experience. The online is all you really have, and it's trash because there's no. There's nothing else to this game. It's just a bare bones fighter, and the online where you do the fighting is trash. So, you think new people buy this game and get hyped because the shit's skipping every three seconds? Hell no. That's so important. Online is super important to keeping people around. I don't give a fuck. Any stupid ass corporation thinks like if they're like cool to, just because you think because if we have rollback, you think people buy the game? Like that's you. You can't even have people playing the fucking. If you can't have people playing the fucking, then of course no one's gonna want to buy this. So that's the first step for anyone trying to fucking make a fight or <laughs> more a way for them to play it correctly. And they should have learning tools and they should have more options for the uh, casual player to enjoy. I think Grand Blue did everything right, but, but the neck. I think Grand Blue is a good example of everything because the tutorial is okay, but there's a lot of stuff you can do in that. It's not fighting. Like you can do the RPGs where you can try to customize your character. And there's, just because of that, that's more than enough for a lot of people. Because <laughs> there's probably a ton of people that only played like the gacha game that are probably playing Grey Blue Fantasy. They're probably trash. But the RPG is there. And it may entice them to like take the next step to be good at action. I and if you complete that mode, it gives you stuff that you can use on the phone game. So it's like, yeah, exactly. it's a double it's whammy. The best <laughs> idea ever. It's the best idea ever. <laughs> You got all these horny people to play fighting games. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> but, yeah. That's how I feel. I, I think I think Grand Blue is a really good step in the right direction of making a game difficult. Not have hold your hand. But at the same time, you uh, have have more accessible. It's just they failed on not having rollback netcode. But, you know, Arcs are apparently doing that for Gensard. And I guess that proves that if you yell at them long enough, they'll fucking listen. Because they for sure, Arxis was not going to ever do it if we do <laughs> yeah. it. And we actually yeah. mentioned this on the show um, last was it last week or the week before. It's like if you, if you look at the fact that the demo is in rollback, I mean, uh, the delay, they had no actual intention of doing this at first. So, like, they had to switch up mid game at some point. Yep. 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 It's just fucking proof. Proof in the pudding that. You have to raise your voice. Everyone that says don't ha- don't harass the corporation, harass the shit out of them. They're not a <laughs> fucking person. They're an entity. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a fucking corporation. Yell at them. Don't yell at the fucking guy that yeah. represents them. 
But <laughs> let him know that we're pissed. That's that's what's important. Because if you don't, what's, what, what if what if he never yelled about it? What the heck? You'll be wasting money and time. Yes. You think? What well, you think we're happy? Okay, we're, we're fighting game players. You think you're happier playing a game that you know you can play anyone online and have a lot of time and have a possible scene? Or do you want to waste your time playing a game that's impossible to play online, and then the scene dies, and then you have nothing to show? <laughs> I think the I think the fucking uh, answer is pretty clear that everyone wants to just play a game to enjoy the full. And I'm telling you, man, like the late net code, uh, XR could have been probably been three times as big if it had rolled back. Just just because when it came out, it was the only fighting game or anime game that even looked like that, and I knew a lot of people that liked it. And they they purchased Sonic, but they never bought the rest of them because the, the 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 fucking stigma is that the shit's dead <laughs> line, which it is. Yeah. Like online is so like scarce. Like uh, like the player lobbies are truly where you only get games. I remember when the arcade when when the game first comes out, the arcades, the little uh the like open lobby is full. But I think like two months later that shit's dead. Almost every. <laughs> I think that's I think well, that's optimistic. <laughs> I was like, I think that's optimistic. Yeah, well, I think it died quicker than that. It still works in like Japan because like when I watch a Mito stream, he'll go in there. But that don't happen anywhere else though. Yeah, it's bad. It's uh, it's and it's because you know people just get sick of playing. Well, it's it's like a domino effect. I always say it's like if you start. I I, I think I told this to the uh, Grand Blue guys that were like. Say how great the netcode is, because they're like, this game is not good, the late netcode. I'm like, dude, you shut the fuck up. You don't even know what you're talking about. I was like, you think this is good, but just wait. It's going to fall to the same pattern as all these other fucking games. It's going to start off good because everyone's on, and you have more options, so you will always pick the closer option. But then, as the months go on, and people quit because they lose, or they lose interest, you're going to have less options. And then guess what's going to happen? Those guys... Are gonna lose interest because they can't get good matches, so they're gonna drop out. And then the guys that were barely clinging on that were, are losing interest because they can't get those guys no more. And then all you have is left is the hardcore players, and they're spread all over the fucking world. Yep. And now your closest buddy, you better you better fucking call everyone in your state <laughs> and, and hunker down. Or in in guilty years case, you better call everyone on the East Coast to have a single lobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it used to go go on. Yeah. So like, uh, go on Twitter and pretty much set up an East Coast lobby. Yeah, so like that, that's the way it is. And it's going to happen to fucking Grand Blue. It's going to happen. It always happens. And it's not because the game is bad. It's because the more the game goes on, the worse the connectors get and the more stipulations that come with trying to have a proper match. All anyone that plays these fucking fighting games wants is a proper match and a good battle. How are you supposed to fucking enjoy the fucking game if you can't even beat the net code? <laughs> and a lot of characters. A lot of people... Casual and competitive love a lot of characters. Yes, and a lot of characters. But that shit is fucking something. Else. Competitively, <laughs> that is well, competitively, Yeah, it, it, it depends on what audience yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I totally agree with uh, Guilty Gear. So, like, in, in this time of coronavirus, right, I think this is very telling because a lot of people are hopping online now. So this is going to give like, a lot of devs and companies kind of, like, a big picture of how everything is going with their games, who's playing what, and how and like how long is it gonna last? Like you said, so it's. I think this is pretty interesting times we live in. That, um, people still play Skullgirls. Yeah, they can people still play uh, uh, Infinite. Uh, yeah, Marvel. they still play Infinite. They still play Killer Instinct because they can. Yeah, I I can't play Street Fighter Four. It's just trash. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Every time I the only the last time I saw somebody play Street Fighter Four was uh D B Joseph because he called out somebody like in Discord and that's the only time I saw somebody play Street Fighter Four. <laughs> Turn on I played that. him like a couple months ago. <laughs> he ain't got it in him anymore, man. That guy lost and he re left immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's his thing. He did that too. He did that in Demean Grand Blue. He beat me like four he beat me like seven times straight because I didn't know how to play versus a good Zeta. And then I got one game, and they left. <laughs> <laughs> shout, but, out, shout out to DBJ. Yeah, shout out to, shout out to Sensei there. <laughs> <laughs> but fucking, uh, yeah, man, it's it's rough times. And I, I feel like I've talked about net, Netcode every single podcast I've been on for the last 
it's because it's so important. And if talking about it every podcast I go to is helpful, then I'm gonna keep doing it because it is important. It's like we have no other we have no other choice right now. And when you have no when you get desperate enough and you have to play online, it it just makes you resent. I I still I <laughs> I did I used to play Sancho all the time when the game first came out. But after that first month, uh, Nevo ended, I quit online. Period. Oh wow, really? Dang. Well, I haven't played online at all since Evo because after Evo there was a huge drop off, and matches became horrendous, and oh, yeah. that was it. I haven't played online really since. I still play. I'll play every now and then if someone invites me, but I'm still like the bottom rank because <laughs> why would I play it? It's it's almost and nothing you do online in that game is like legitimate almost because the strategies are almost unreal because. <laughs> A lot of things that work on in that game online are almost like the dumbest thing you can ever do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I always see instances of that. Like, uh, like, like the you always mentioned Darley, and I remember um, I was in a chat like talking to somebody, and it was like Jacko playing on stream versus um, Ghost the Emperor, and I was like, man, why won't Ghost just Subami this dude off the, out of the air? And somebody immediately <laughs> falls like, you can't do that, Darley. See, jump C is too good. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was, and, I was, and I was like arguing and then I stopped to think about it like if I play, was playing online yeah you can't really deal with that unless you're preemptive and that's how a lot of games are you don't realize the strategies you're kind of building up to are, um, are not legitimate or they might be legitimate to a degree until you go offline fighting somebody who has good reactions and knowledge and then you feel like an idiot I've never lost to a dolly tournament ever <laughs> I think it's because they all have used the same strat, and it doesn't even work. So it's just it's an easy win because the that strat is almost that strat is so trash because it's so easy. But online is almost unfallible. <laughs> but, you know, another crazy thing about not having good net code is they have a lot of interesting concepts for different modes of like with multiplayer for FG, uh, for fighting games online, but they don't get to see the light of day because the online is so bad. Yep. Like yep. you say, like people didn't hop on the Sam show anymore. I'm pretty sure a lot of people did dropped off rank like rocks. Yeah. Like, like how can we enjoy rank? Oh, th that's another thing that kills uh, anime game is that uh, the rank dries up so fast after the first two months. Then that's the first thing any casual player does. Probably. It's just hop on rank. <laughs> I've seen so, that many it, times. Yeah. So if rank is dead. And no one is playing ranked because it's terrible, then your game is like already fucking dead in the eyes of a casual player. Unis? I love Unis. It's dead. I can't play ranked. I can't play in lobby. <laughs> it's fucking dead. I have to go to Discord. And when I do play someone in ranked, it's like 18 frame delay or like 7, which is still terrible. Yeah. So even though I know Under Night in the tournament scene is very fine, but for a casual, I can never tell a casual player. Like, a casual gamer that is not a fighting gamer, I can never convince him to play them. Ever. Because, what are you going to do? I want to sign him up for everything. I'm going to be like, look, make a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Make a Facebook. <laughs> make a Discord. And then talk to these guys. And then you'll pick a day out of the week to play. And then that'll be the time you play under. <laughs> Like, you know, that's, you know, that's <laughs> funny, but that's so true. We I've done that to so many, like, people who are new to the FGC. The, the first thing is, like, where do I go to get some matches? And we'll direct them to Discord, Twitter, you know, all that stuff. That's, man, you're right. Yes. <laughs> that's a killer. You think, you I, know, I can't imagine how many people actually follow up. You know, the, um, it's funny. I've only ran into one, I've only ran into, like, four people that play fighting games that aren't, like, Mortal Kombat. I've been doing my job for like 10 years and I've been going to people's homes to do cable. I've only met like three people that play fighting that aren't playing Mortal Kombat. And I know why people play Mortal Kombat in Justice is because they can hop on ranked. I promise you. And they keep playing it because they can just hop on and play because there's tons of people that play Mortal Kombat. Even if the game is like so quote unquote dead locally, yeah. it's alive online. Trust me. And the but then I've only met like the people I have met they played like Street Fighter I've only met one person that played Street Fighter, and then I met one kid I actually didn't meet I didn't meet the kid I was there to fix his mom's internet and the internet was in his room and he had the router directly connected to his PC 
that guy had had the Unite and Birth Discord up. <laughs> Damn. And I was like, oh shit, I can totally fuck this kid up. <laughs> but it was funny. I never met anyone that that was such a weird chance happening that I met that guy. That guy was a complete weeb. I don't even know how good he was. That guy was that guy was totally weeb. It's <laughs> always a crap shoot. His wallpaper and all his belongings. He was complete package. <laughs> but that guy, like, that was the only other guy I ever met that played fighting games. And I'm like, man, so fighting games really ain't that popular unless they're Mortal Kombat or it just... And the really the decider is, like, how long do these people keep this game? Because most people return their game or sell back to GameStop. But if you're going to keep the game, it's because it's still people to play. So people are still playing Mortal Kombat. People are still just easy shit for them to buy. And there's almost always people in rank. Even now, is Injustice dead? Locally? I, is there people in ranked? I don't play Injustice, but I'm 90% sure if I hop in ranked in Injustice, I'll find somebody. I've, I've seen people play uh, Injustice too. Um, yeah, like, well. I can play Injustice too on rank. For sure, right now. Even though there's no local Injustice 2, I can totally find Injustice I see yeah. so many like great uh, match exhibitions or on, or on Twitter for NBCI, and I'm like, man, I always tell myself I'll never go back to that game. But just the sheer fact that they're having fun because of the net code, I'm like, man, <laughs> it makes you jealous. <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm jealous as fuck, man. I'm so jealous all the time. <laughs> like I'm super jealous of Guilty Gear. Like I'm jealous of y'all motherfuckers because. Yeah, well, we gotta we gotta continue to keep so we can't just let it stop with Arcs is doing it to get to get right. I think like yeah, it's cool that they got it and everything, but the next step is like we just gotta keep voicing it right because if we don't, we some other companies were like, well, they don't care too much about it because we had, they, it died down when once Guilty Gear came out. It's like no, we gotta keep at it. We gotta keep letting them know that rollback netcode should be the thing. Yeah, for sure. Because if you if you let them if you let up, they might just go back the way. It's almost painful to think that someone would go back to a shittier method because it's cheaper, but, you know, it, I, I companies have done worse for less. But they need to understand that this equals longevity. And I, I know it's going to be painful for you fucking Guilty Gear players that don't like the new game, but you all <laughs> might have to bite the bullet and keep playing it anyway. Because <laughs> it's like, if you guys hate this game, here's, this game is like a catch-22. Because it's like, if you guys legitimately don't like it because the game doesn't present to you the things you enjoy about Guilty Gear, and you guys all just like, man, fuck this shit, then it's going to look like to them, they're like, why did we make this shit roll back? <laughs> why did yeah. we spend money on this? But luckily, I think that it has, since it has rolled back, though the state of the fighting community, there's going to be a lot of new players, like a lot, that may have not picked it up, but are desperate to play someone online without, you know, getting fucked and- <laughs> oh, I saw a lot, I saw a lot of YouTube comments. People saying, "Oh, I'm down for Guilty Gear now because uh, rollback netcode." Yeah, it's a big deal. I'm down for it. I wasn't gonna buy it. I actually was shitting on it. I was like, "Fuck this game! I'm gonna play uh, Grand Blue because Grand Blue has all the elements I like." But now that the shit is rollback, fuck Grand Blue. Why would <laughs> I play Grand Blue? I can't play Grand Blue online in three months. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's such a big deck code. It's such a big deal. It's such a. It's not even a compromise. It's a necessity. <laughs> you have to have it. Uh, how many games are dead? Street Fighter Four is dead. In the, you got in the, more people playing X Men vs. Street Fighter on Fight K than Street Fighter Four. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> Street Fighter Four is a good game, in my opinion, and like it offers a lot. But if you weren't playing Street Fighter Four when it was active, you done. You missed out. There's nothing you can do to capture that back because there's. There's there's not anyone there for you. There's people there. Obviously, there's people still playing Street Fighter Four, but the uh, the way to enjoy Four to its maximum potential with good play, like good connection, that's gone for. That's not even an option. That's, and like you and like you mentioned earlier with like Guilty Gear XR example, where like they came out with sequels, but people, a lot of people didn't care about it because the netcode itself was like really bad. I feel like now that uh, Strive. Is having a rollback netcode, it makes uh, having a sequel much more like promising for for people. It makes them want to be, like really put their money towards it. Yeah, well, there's there's a future ahead of them, not deserted lobbies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It's such a big deal. I I, I know I hammered it in, but god damn. It, I feel like it's been said so much, but I just feel like it's also not been said enough. Because <laughs> we've been suffering. It's been 10 years. It's about a 14 out of 2009. Dude, HDR I... came out in 2008 and had rollback. Why? Why did Street Fighter 4 not have rollback? Capcom made HDR. <laughs> they know this shit existed. <laughs> Ugh, so fucked up. I always laugh at uh because you mentioned that. Uh... And I think I linked it to you. Uh, Dragon Ball Zenkai Blast, the arcade game. Yeah. Namco made a four-player, like, open-world Dragon Ball Z game, and it had GGPO, and I think it's the first 3D game that used it. No way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a, it's, yeah, so it's an arcade game where you pick, and it's kind of like a Battle Royale, where there's four DBZ characters. You pick whatever character, and it's like an open-world shoot. Um, I think it's... It was kind of like the prototype to what eventually became like Xenoverse or something, but uh, but yeah, they put um, they put rollback in that. It was, it was the first 3D game that that had it. Yeah, and then they made Tekken Seven, and then they're like, eh, <laughs> just ship it out the way it is. This, this so, actually, don't you want a tutorial? <laughs> ah. This actually it's might have been before it, like Tekken Tag, actually. Tekken Tag. Oh, for real? Yeah, maybe. I have to go back and look at the date. Holy shit. They fuck them. They, got, they hate us. <laughs> <laughs> they have to hate us. <laughs> oh, man. I fucking hate fighting them. <laughs> I hate them, man. I hate the way they bounce games. I hate the way they fucking design the damn that code. I hate everything you know, about it. I was loving fighting games. I still love fighting games, but... I was super in love with them when I had just my console, and then when I got PC and I started playing just other games in general again, and I was able to play people from around the world, just in other games, I was like, oh, this is what it's like. I haven't had this feeling in a long time. The last time I had that feeling was when I was playing like Rad and Rock Online years ago. I was like, whoa, like, whoa, imagine if fighting games could do this. Now I'm pissed off, because now I'm fighting games out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't get away with that anyway. Like, you, you turn on World of Warcraft, and then you lag out trying to hit a rat. <laughs> like nobody would buy that shit. Like, you, you could, you could, no one would subscribe. You know, imagine, you could, imagine if like Halo had to lay that code, like the newest one. Shit, no one would play that shit. I, I always tell people that uh, the only reason we have the lay net code is because it's an option. But for other games, it's not even an option because they would not even be playable. So fighting games are just like cursed because it's an option. Like. I'm pretty sure you cannot play shooters on the lane that code because Dude, I reloaded like five times. Why didn't I get my reload? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's so slow, right? It's super delayed, right? So like everyone would be moving really behind. <laughs> like Activision, it's so fucking bad. Yeah, Activision, Bungie, they never hit the end of it. Actually, <laughs> like they 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 get deluged by fans and players probably on a daily basis. Like like think about the like the week they made Bastion like actually good in Overwatch. And then, like, look at their forms blow up. Like, they can't, they, they can't do anything wrong without having their fans be like, "Whoa, buddy!" <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, like that. I mean, we're we're finally to that point, and people are like, "Come on, guys, don't be that belligerent." I'm like, "No, do it," because these guys clearly have had 12 years to get the message. Fucking, because I know for a fact we've been complaining about the shit. I remember. Everyone bitching about KOF 13's trash internet. <laughs> and here we are. Ten years or seven years. Trash internet still. And you know what KOF 15? Probably had trash internet still. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Because like you, you mentioned KOF 13. Because I, I, I specifically remember when they were building up to that game. They they actually had Atlas on board. And they did what they actually marketed that game outside of fighting game circles. Which is really rare in the first place. Like, they put it in general video game places. They put it in, like, actual news places. Like, they they would push that game really hard. And it's like, everyone was like, yo, KOF. You know, they brought in the the famous FG players and other people to play it. And it's like, everyone was like, yo, this game's coming out. We can't wait. And then, uh, <laughs> they did a net code test beforehand. It was funny because it was before the game came out. And it was like, one of the um, developers or somebody played it. And they were like, yeah, this is actually good. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, finally. And then it came out, and it was like, we can't play this shit on console. <laughs> like, 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 we can't play it. The train oh. literally came to a halt after, like, picking up so much momentum. 
because KOF thirteen. Everybody was hyped for that game. It looked amazing. It was marketed. It, oh man. It people had fun playing do the combos in training mode, but they could not do them online. <laughs> Uh, man, what a what a crazy drop! They they dropped the ball now. Yeah, it's, it's like it's actually it's much the same way because they market it that, like they didn't market as much as Cable Thirteen, but they marketed it, they pushed it, they had demos out there at majors, like they made sure people knew what it was and they would constantly put it in put it in your face. So like everyone looked at it, it was like, yo man, this is hype. Uh. Because everyone was looking forward to it, everyone was talking about how they were going to be the you know the next champion. Like I I you see with all games, but you know like. They pushed it. They made sure people knew what it was, and then you, you get the final product. And, and yeah, I feel like Sam <laughs> Show is KOF, KOF 13 all over again. Where we're like, the game is super fun, and people really do like it, but we can't play it. <laughs> this is so fucking shitty. I can't even play Terrence. <laughs> he lives right down the street. Can't play Terrence. Yeah. Why can't I not play Terrence? Ah uh, man, it's. I mean, I think with Strive things are like we we've, we've seen a Japanese developer, a major Japanese developer, put in their flagship games, the change, and I think that in itself is big because we couldn't even get that before, and then now is looking like an actual reality. So I think, I think usually when you see Japanese devs, they tend to like fall in line when someone else does does something first. So I'm thinking it's a good sign overall. It is good. I think the netcode decision is great. Let's talk about some other stuff about Striver. <laughs> <laughs> what the was? fuck is up with them lobbies? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, did, oh that's oh that was that an April Fool's joke? It better be. It looks ugly. <laughs> that has to be. No, that's an April Fool's. Joke. I think it's real. I, I'm pretty sure that's an April Fool's joke. I mean, you say that, but the fucking the the what's it called it looks the same still. The um. The uh, uh the overlay the UI. <laughs> well, they they actually said um in the next demo they're changing all of that. They better cause yeah they they said it's this gonna when the ne- demo comes it's gonna be completely different. That's what they've no, said. No more Mario Party. No more Mario Party. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> About to steal oh, some stars. Man, man. Shit wasn't April Fool's joke. I don't speak Japanese. April. No. Oh. Uh, if, if that's where we come to, I think I think we kind of um uh, we're we're nearing our natural end. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just, right, so like, if it is, if it ends up become, let's just say, if it ends up becoming an actual thing, just remember it was on April Fools. So it, it if it becomes an actual thing, it's just a joke. It's like, oh. yeah, it's an actual joke. An so endless nobody, joke. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. At least, at least we have the rollback. <laughs> that, <that's laughs> at least the, we have the rollback. <laughs> that's the that's the best part. Honestly, even with all the trash decisions they could possibly make, they got the first step. Yeah, which is the game is player. Oh, I was scared about that because when they had that uh, J- Japan Arcade Expo and they showed that Guilty Gear Strive was coming to arcades, I was like, oh, we're not getting rollback. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I was super scared, but now it's proved on. So, hey, I'm I'm happy. Look, the only reason I'm happy is because there's hope at the end of the tunnel that even if I don't like Strive, I could still at least try to drive in the beginning and. Maybe I'll work through it just because the netcode is so good or better than the alternatives that I'll I'll get past the phase of me being a belligerent okay. <laughs> I mean you, you I mean, will always go you always go back to it, you know, like probably like months down the line. Since yeah, and I'll be fine. I don't have to like feel like, hey, if I don't play this now, that's it. The game is dead <laughs> in seven months. <laughs> like the timer starts now. I feel like fighting games I feel like most fighting games that are from fan. Are, are like that. Like, as soon as the game comes up, TikTok! <laughs> TikTok! You, gotta, you, you better learn everything in the first three months. <laughs> yeah, it's like you gotta be like a Tekken or a Street Fighter pretty much to avoid that. Yeah, it's the only way you can avoid that scenario. Those are the only games that don't like, either disappear locally or, or disappear online. Even then Tekken is trash online. It's super. Because all that belligerent shit that doesn't work it extra works. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people play it. I know. They don't care. Well, I mean, they do care. They just, they're going to do it anyway. They're going to play anyway. <laughs> At least you got someone to play online and complain about. <laughs> all right, we're all in this together, man. What a, what a, what a fucking 
What a ugh, netcode. I've been talking about netcode for six hours. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Yeah, I was uh in your in your stream and it's li watching you uh lead the chat in the uh round table. <laughs> oh man, I was I feel bad because it's like you know the second time I did something like that, and every time I'm on those things, I'm the one that's talking. Hey man, you got you got a lot on your mind. Well, that's why you should take well, no my, one stops me. You should take <laughs> my <laughs> time. No, that's <laughs> yeah, you're passionate, man. Take my idea that I've been putting in your head and make that video blog, man. Why do you want me to rant on YouTube? But because <laughs> you got a lot to say, man. The angry video game nerd Redux Fighting Game Edition. It ain't always got to be angry. Just just be passionate and true to what you want to say. I don't want to be like Sage. <laughs> even people, who, even people who don't know what the hell's going on with, with fighting games. If you're passionate, they'll be like, "Whoa, this guy." He really wants <laughs> robot net code or whatever funny game. <laughs> well, I don't want to be the the sunglasses in the truck. Oh, the man. man for fighting games. <laughs> Let me tell you why the government be fucking fucking me. <laughs> <Yeah. ass. laughs> Come on, man. Open up the stream with your tinfoil hat. Yeah, it's like, let me tell you about Capcom. This is what they don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know those uh, angry uh, political pundits? Listen up, America. You, you start up. Listen up, FGC. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up. Well, be like, be like fucking Bernie Mac. <laughs> FGC. <laughs> I'm tired of this FGC. Stand. You, never, you never see their call follow, following in person. You're like, where are, has, where are all these views coming from? <laughs> Man, I that's just develop a following for that. I just don't know how much I would embrace that because <laughs> I already, I, I don't want to. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> To not be the uh, the assault the aggressor, because <laughs> I've already felt like I've already uh, so like I, 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 I Casey, you're part of the Discord, so I have to talk deep about it. So <laughs> both you, Coach, I've already been kicked out of the fucking anime Discord like twice <laughs> or silence, and I took that as a lesson to like withdraw myself a little bit because everyone there was so like eh, about the way I am. So I try my best now to not impose. I don't want to go back because I'm pissed, but I don't want to impose, be an imposing figure. I want to be approachable by everybody. I'm just trying to help everybody right now. But I don't know how much me ranting in my car with my sunglasses on does that. <laughs> like <it fits> that. <laughs> yeah, but just, you just... don't want to end up like, uh, what's the thing with Sub-Zero? That's a character, Tom Brady. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't get it. <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> I think I think we're gonna make that the wrap up point. <laughs> yeah. wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. All right, hold man. up. Go ahead. Uh, SAK, <laughs> you better fucking fix some skulls real quick. I can't even play Tam Tam. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would you do that? It's just All training. Right, All right. Well, I was gonna ask you if you had any last words, but I guess those are it. Casey, no, those are my last words. My last words are, I can't believe SNK glitched Tam Tam Skulls. Out of all the things <laughs> in this fucking game that could have went wrong, it had to be my fucking character that I just got completed. Like, it just became a complete character. They fucked me. I'm not even going to play Tam Tam. I'm going to be playing Oki. And I, I was really excited. Because I just got done playing Bates. Only having one skull in track. They got it. And aside from that... Uh, if y'all want to like follow me on YouTube or some shit, you can follow me on my. Uh, you know, but the pain bot is everything. It's for pain bot TV. It shows up on Twitch and YouTube. And, and like, like always, I will have all of that in the description. Yes. Cool. And he does that. <laughs> <laughs> so but, uh, I guess it. I guess that's it. All right, man. Well, first of all, man, thank you for uh, spending some time with us, lovely peons. I know you are Hollywood and you. You hit the big time, Hollywood, brother, man. man. Like thank, you for <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing your light with us, Payne. <laughs> we can do it again whenever y'all want. Oh, anytime, man. I, I love your energy, by the way. I thought the anime guys didn't like my energy, so I just fucking left. It's like, I'm too hostile or too Believe much. It or not, there, are some anime peop there are some people in the anime scene that are like kind of like you, so they they're calling the kettle black at the... So, so, <laughs> yeah. Hey man, the the worst the the worst thing we don't like is ourselves. Usually, <laughs> when we see uh, ourselves in others, we tend to get extra mad. We're getting too deep. We're getting too deep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you, Fame, bye for coming on. Um, we're gonna have another one in the books. This is episode nine. So I appreciate anybody who took the time to listen. Um, Casey, anything else you want to say? Oh no, man, I'm just that's it. 
Thank All you, right. Paintbot, for coming through, man. Bro, bro. All right. Peace out. Peace.